You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here with Joes and Rob from The Myopia Condition. Their new album, Event Horizon, is out now, so check it out. You guys, thanks for taking time to talk to me, and welcome to The Pit. Thanks, man. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, it's really good to uh, do these interviews. So uh, I, I kind of like to start off with just what have you been listening to lately? Joes, you take that one. Oh, man. It's been a lot of different things. Um the last couple of days, the latest album from Counterparts. I guess, yes. Yeah. I got into that album a year ago and I just hit it, had it on repeat for months. And then I recently started listening to it again. So, yeah, wicked. Nice. <clears throat> for me, I've been, uh, man, I just keep listening to that latest Devin album, uh, Empath. That's been a heavy. Heavy goal for me. A lot of Tesseract. Um, what else? You know what a band that I, I've really been getting into is uh, Leprous. Those guys put out some deadly stuff. I think they're from Scandinavia somewhere. And super proggy, amazing, amazing vocalist. But like, you know, they still, some of their older albums especially still have like quite a nice heavy metal chunk to it as well. They're kind of getting a little more progressive and, and lighter now, but the music's still awesome. But that's pretty much what I've been listening to. Big Devin fan always. They're surprisingly Australian. There's a crazy scene going on in Australia right now. Just all these bands popping up. Oh, man. There's some good, like, Kadinja, 12 Foot Ninja. There's some wicked Australian metal bands. Thy Art is Murder, Parkway Drive. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but this has also been a really exciting uh, summer for Canadian metal as well, as you guys already know. I mean, obviously, it's also been super depressing for everybody because of the pandemic, but... Yeah. We have had a lot of really good albums drop this year, including Event Horizon. So, you guys, how did my, the myopia condition begin? Because this has like a been a long time in the making, has it not? It's been a. I think we recorded drums two years ago, roughly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time in the making, even for Josh, like the main songwriter. He wrote some of the songs quite a while ago, like years ago. So. Uh... Yeah, we definitely took a little bit to a little way longer than we wanted to to get the actual album together and out. But, you know, yeah. life gets in the way sometimes. But, yeah, it, uh, it started just with some jamming. Josh and our drummer, Greg. So Josh Gould is like the main uh, songwriter for like writing the riffs and songs and stuff. And him and Greg started jamming together. And, yeah, it slowly just started absorbing members. Uh, I came in and started playing bass. We uh, figured Joe would be a wicked addition for vocals. And then uh, our old guitarist, Dave, came in after to add some spice to the band. And uh, he's since left the band. And we have Craig McKenzie now. So, But Dave, was uh, he recorded on the album. So, And, and uh, Rob, you, were, you know Josh from being in the band uh, Earth's Ashes together, right? So- yeah, yeah. We played in Earth's Ashes for quite a long time. I think it was like eight years or something like that. <clears throat> So some some of this material was kind of around back then, even. Oh yeah, big time. Like we, it was never used in our sashes stuff because Josh was our vocalist in our sashes. But uh, yeah, he was. He, he's always been a great guitar player. He he was messing around with some of those riffs for sure, eight years ago probably on a couple songs. I know two of the songs. I can't remember exactly which ones. He'd be able to tell you are like yeah, they're like some of the riffs are like a decade old. <laughs> and, and Joe, as you were in a band called Leave the Living, is that is that how you guys met? Yep. I honestly, yeah, I probably wouldn't have met any of these guys if it wasn't for being in that band and just being in the metal scene in general. Because that's definitely how I got involved with everything. You know, you're in a band, you play shows together locally, and you just get to know everybody. And yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So, uh, was the kind of uh, spearheaded, was it mostly Josh and Rob and Dave that kind of spearheaded this or? It started out uh, definitely Josh and Greg. I was honestly, I was reluctant to join the band on bass because I was just like, man, that sounds like really hard. Like I, I'm multi <laughs> instrumentalist and I've been playing bass for a long time, but I, I played a lot more like funk bass and, you know, like older rock style bass. So I'm like listening to some of these riffs. I'm like, man, that sounds fucking hard to learn. <laughs> so it took, it took him a couple of days to work on me and I was like, okay. And, you know, I sat down and uh, put the practice and learned the songs and, right away fell in love with the music it just had a good vibe do you even play with a pick do you do this all with your fingers i do about 90 percent with my fingers <clears throat> i think the only album i play with a pick on or song on the album is 
uh, song 9000 just because <laughs> some of those riffs at the beginning and the speed of it, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, and I just wanted to try a different technique and some of the newer songs we're working on. I'll go back and forth, but generally I'm like one of those snobby purists that just likes to use fingers. <laughs> <laughs> because you like to show off that you have the talent to do so <laughs> it's, it's what i mostly worked on and the guys who taught me to play bass when i was younger were definitely more traditional in that sense where like anything you can do with a pick you can do with uh your fingers as well if you put the time in uh so event horizon this is like the point of no return do you guys kind of is this a concept that you came up with early on in the recording process, or is this something that's kind of come out more later now, as you've seen the pandemic and the situation of the world, or has it been just kind of both? And it's like, Oh, now it even makes even more sense. You can take that one, Joseph. Hmm. Well, who even came up with that? I know event horizon wasn't something until the album was recorded. Was that not yeah. correct, Rob? Yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a later thing because that picture of the black hole came out and me and Josh thought it was really cool, so we kind of pitched it. Right, yeah. So, yeah, it was a little bit later on that the the album title track, I guess, came along. And that was actually something that... It was probably the last song that was sort of uh, done up it was the intro. Yeah, yeah. Heath, so. Heath from uh, Melodious Design put that one up for us, a MIDI intro, and... and yeah and to talk to add to that too it definitely did um you know we we like spacey vibes and stuff and some of that comes across in the music but uh it did work out it represented the album well and like us our first album like you know it all just you know once you're past the event horizon it's you know it's no turning back so i, I think it worked out in that sense yeah it's definitely fitting i think yeah and with, well, but as kind of getting back to the lyrics, it seems like there's kind of an overall theme of revolving around mental health and personal struggle. Uh, so is that something that you guys all wanted in the music right away? There's like, this is going to be like a cathartic kind of a thing. Mm, I honestly don't know what the other guys feel or think about that. <laughs> it's never really been brought up to me, but I just, I just wrote what I've, I just write what I feel at the time type thing. It's a, it's the best way for me to vent. And um, so, you know, one day I might be feeling really bummed out or sad or relationship issues or whatever. So the song might have more of a dark sort of feel. And then another day I might be feeling like, you know, positive, you know, I can get through this and then I'll write like a, sort of like overcoming those uh mental blocks in your head or those those thoughts that just try to drag you down type thing i'm not sure if it's gonna continue to be like a future thing but we'll see yeah man yeah it's where you were at the time and me as a musician like if i'm not the vocalist i don't really feel it's my place to you know be able to have too much input on lyrics that's like you i i i personally like the lyrics that come from a real place so yeah, you know, we it might not have been a thought process for us as a band to be like, you know, you should write about this, Joe's, but like we've always been open to what he's writing about because turns out into some heavy, awesome stuff. And especially in metal, if you're coming from an emotional place with extreme vocals, it comes across, I find at least. Yeah, and it makes it easier for me definitely to put more of a performance on because it's not like I don't even have to try. It's just kind of there already. Type thing. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree with that too. That's a, that's a really strong way of putting it is uh, it's, you can't really put the passion and the power behind it unless you know for sure that's something you believe in, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you guys getting tired of trying to figure out what genre you are? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you nailed it right there. Yeah. Man, I've always, I've always been bad and I'm the one. Uh, so it, <clears throat> if there's anybody to blame for the confusion, it's definitely me because I'm kind of heading all of this release and the social media and everything myself <laughs> and like i've i've like you know john like there's so many genres and they all encompass so much different things like yes there's definitely some progressive elements maybe not enough to call it progressive there's like you know some core elements metal core death metal there's technical death metal involved in there but <clears throat> i uh i coined the t- i'm pretty sure i i've never heard it before but i think i coined the term gent core because there are some genty elements in the album, but especially to where we're going with the new music, it's getting a little more of a gent vibe. And I just thought it was like a mix of gent 
aspects in metalcore and i just thought it sounded funny anyway too so <laughs> i i don't know i would like I, I need to find somebody who really knows genres get them to listen to the album be like what is this and i will just call it that from now on because it has definitely been uh um some uh subject of criticism like well you know like whether it's proggy enough or if it has a gent sound to it that's just like sorry i'm an idiot (laughs) (laughs) so what's on the horizon for you guys right now like i think you are already started working on some new material maybe huh Huh? yeah we got uh how many songs a few like three we got three solid for sure. Two more that are like, uh, they just need to be rehearsed a bit, which usually doesn't take us long. We have six in the bank right now, for sure. Three of which are really strong. And we're pretty stoked about. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're like, you sh- we're definitely not going to take near as long for the next release. And, you know, it was, it's because of how long it took. It's like, Hey, get this one out, give it the, uh, you know, the right amount of time to, uh, you know, get out there and give us a, us like you know give us a base and then yeah we're gonna pop right into the studio and uh do the next next album we're just still not sure how long we want that album to be so yeah. it's tough um trying to figure out because even though that was a nine song album uh event horizon it's still it still comes in under 30 minutes so like part of me wants to make a longer album but a part of me just wants to get like a maybe like an ep release out and just get a like a five or six song banger ep out but who knows that'll 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 start to unfold in the next like six months, I'd say. But I'd say like in the springtime, you'll start to see uh, um, uh, like input and kind of teasers to what we're working on. And having the musical ideas kind of always will be in this echo chamber in your brain, but doing lyrics is a whole different thing. So Joe's, when you approach the lyrics, do you like to just wait until you can hear the whole song sort of as a finished product or is it? a bunch of different ideas kind of always around in your brain hitting my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly when I have a full finished song that I can listen to. So then I'll have a listen. I'll kind of, I don't know, judge the way it makes me feel. And then just sort of write, write whatever's on my mind, whatever bring, whatever that feeling brings to my mind that's what I'll write. Whether it's going to be an angry one or a positive one or who knows, maybe they'll start getting goofy in some spots, but (laughs) (laughs) is there anything else you guys would like to say to our listeners? You can start Joe's. Well, just appreciate anyone who does have a listen or give us a like or share. It's madly appreciated. It's been a long time coming for us to get this album out and it's just, it's been really awesome to hear, you know, input or, you know, people liking it or even just uh, criticism that, you know, maybe we can take to the studio next time. So, yeah. And then for me, yeah, it's like, I got to jump on that. Obviously, thanks to everybody that has given us any feedback at all. It's been immensely positive. Uh, it's it, Yeah, it's been a great experience to finally get it out. All the reviews have been really well done and and you know they're like super positive with like you know obviously any new band needs some sort of constructive criticism of course and we're very grateful for that as well but uh you know take it take it easy be safe uh you know it's hard to support local music right now because there isn't so much going on obviously with uh with the way things are right now but um yeah you know be good to each other and uh uh, as well stay tuned for more stuff we're not gonna slow this train down anytime soon we're just gonna keep promoting this uh, as soon as things get safe enough start setting up tours and everything and the next album will be a massive step forward and like how far we've uh you know come as musicians since we started jamming this stuff in the last three years so yeah just stay tuned and uh be safe thank you so much guys take care of yourselves okay all, all right, right. Thanks. thanks see ya bye